Hello, we're back with Harry Markopoulos talking about his new book, No One Would Listen, a true financial thriller. Harry, uh, you may know that Alan Greenspan, the former Federal Reserve Chairman who was in office uh, from 1987 to 2006, during the time when much of this was building up, certainly not just Madoff, but the entire s succession of two financial bubbles, one based on debt, that eventually brought the financial system and the economy uh, to its knees. And just last week, Alan Greenspan came out with a paper on the crisis called The Crisis. And he said in the paper, in the aftermath of an actual crisis, we will find highly competent examiners failing to have spotted a, a Madoff. And he goes on to say that that's why we still have little choice but to rely upon counterparty surveillance as their first line of crisis defense, meaning for the free markets. Uh, you know, h help us uh, dissect this quote. Were these examiners at the uh, SEC competence? Was this simply an honest case of having too much work to do, not being <coughs> able to ferret out every fraudster? And should free markets be the first line of defense? Uh, if so, how can the SEC help them? If not, what should be the, the first line of defense? Well, you do want counterparties to be your first line of defense. You want to have self-reporting be mm. your first line of defense. We, we proved that that didn't work given the crisis that we've entered. All those checks and balances failed. As far, I would challenge this assumption that the SEC's investor, investigators were competent because, in fact, they were not. They were incompetent. They were not trained, poorly trained, and they didn't understand finance or math. Mm -hmm. And so they, didn't, they shouldn't have had their jobs, and neither should the banking regulators. Not one of them did their jobs. And if you miss subprime, if you miss CDSs, CLOs, CDOs, and if you miss auction rate securities, Bernie Madoff, Lehman, Bear Stearns, AIG, and a whole host of other problems. If you miss all those big giant problems as a regulator, you can change all the rules in the world, but if you don't change the people that are manning those agencies and put competent people in there, nothing really will change because those people couldn't enforce the old rules that we had. Now you want to give them more complex rules and give them broader responsibilities? How are they going to achieve that? Mm -hmm. They're so not. We better figure this out before they have the responsibility of looking out for the fi entire financial system in law, and that's exactly what Senator Dodd wants to do in creating a systemic risk regulator. And if they can't find uh, Madoff after you go out and and warn them, including in a memo with the title, what was the title of your memo? The world's largest hedge fund is a fraud. Maybe I was too subtle. <laughs> Maybe, and you you said that you specifically modeled that after the the Bin Laden uh, memo from from the summer of 2001, and yet still you you got nothing from the SEC. What does it mean to be Competence. You know, if you if you go in to the SEC, you ask for a meeting. You say you think you found a fraud. You've got some documents. What would a competence examiner do? A competent examiner would question you, question your data, look at the data, question your modeling techniques. Be very familiar with those modeling techniques. Want to see independent third-party data sources that you use. Want to look at your fraud theories. Would question you extensively about who else knows about this. And by the way, can I have their contact information? Because I'd like to call them as witnesses. And they would call all those people and find out if it was a fraud or not. They would, in, they would immediately start an investigation, and they would know what to look for because you'd be giving them a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And that's what they should be doing, but that's not what they did. Now, you talk about uh, fixing the SEC to make it a functional organization or putting it out of America's misery. Do we need new laws and rules or do we need to just change the way we, we execute these rules? For example, you talk about getting rid of the lawyers. Uh, you talk about making sure that these people have experience, that they are paid better. Should it be more like the Foreign Service, where after you've done some time on Wall Street, you, you kind of give back and really do try to uh, use your knowledge to, to figure out what's going wrong? Or, or, or it, would that just be an, another case of people from, with, from within the industry uh, protecting their own regulatory capture? I mean, how do you, in the end, how do you fix this problem of there's always going to be more money on Wall Street than there is in government? You need new rules. You mm -hmm. need to bring over-the-counter derivatives under control and under regulatory scrutiny. Right. You certainly need to regulate hedge funds. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get new rules. They're going to get new powers. They're going to get rules to put big firms down, kill the big firms, so they're not too big to fail. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we do get that. But unless you have a new regulatory scheme, right now you have seven different regulators, seven different computer systems. You have these global, powerful financial conglomerates. They may have an insurance arm. 
a broker-dealer arm, an asset management arm, a proprietary hedge fund trading arm, and they may have other arms. Well, you need to be able to connect the dots. Having seven different regulators with seven different computer systems will not connect the dots. Prior to 9-11, we had 16 different intelligence agencies who didn't share information with one another. Now they do. That's the difference. They're able to hopefully connect the dots. So you need to combine the regulation, make mm -hmm. one super regulator with one computer system so that you can go in with cross-functional teams of competent regulators, which I mean coming from the industry. If you take someone who has a trading background, they can sit on their trading desk and spot fraud from a, across the room. Mm -hmm. If you take a money manager like myself and put us in a mana management operation, a mutual fund, we'll be able to spot fraud immediately. If the answers aren't making any sense, we know to call them the cavalry because we have a fraud on our hands. Mm -hmm. And if you have a public accounting background and have done those reports for big companies, then you can spot public accounting fraud immediately. And that's what they need to do is a foreign service type model. Bring people with no hair, gray hair, or dyed hair into government service and compensate them properly. If Wall Street's paying 5 to 10 percent, 5 to 15 percent of the revenues that you bring in every year as bonuses, well, the SEC does too. You find the bad guys $3 for every $1 they steal, mm -hmm. and you pay the staff a 5 to 15 percent bonus based upon successful settled cases. Right, so you could have seven-figure rewards for, for staffers in some cases, maybe even higher. You could have eight-figure mm -hmm. bonuses for government staffers, and I'd be in favor of that if they stopped fraud and prevented us taxpayers from bailing out the banks and the insurance companies for trillions. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have the bad, and the bad guys are paying the fine. It's not coming out of the taxpayers' pockets, it's coming from the bad guys' pockets. And that's right. sort of what we need to do, is you want to set foxes after foxes, because right now you're sending chickens against foxes, and the government's chickens aren't catching any foxes. Mm -hmm. Should some of these investigations be done publicly? You know, I, I can see that there would be a problem if there was a suspected fraud, turned out not to be a fraud, but you have this public information out there hurting someone's reputation, but then yet you see that at least with companies that are publicly traded, like uh, Lehman Brothers, like Bear Stearns, you had short sellers like David Einhorn, uh, who wrote the, the, the foreword to your book, saying publicly something's wrong here. You had a public debate about this. You had market signals where the stock was going down. So you had a greater chance that, that markets could work. With a, a, a fund like Madoff's, this was private. As you said, he even told his customers, don't tell people that you've got your money with me or I'll, I'll kick you out of the fund, which in retrospect would not have been uh, a very bad uh, punishment. Uh, should the SEC have some kind of public blog where they invite people like yourself to say, look, I think I found something here. People should either prove me right or wrong. Uh, something like, uh, 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 like we have the political futures markets for politicians. Something like that for these private funds. You know, which one is going down? Would that help this debate? The SEC has actually adopted that proposal for hmm. me. They are actually starting an office of the whistleblower. And they're going to be paying rewards for people to come in with information. Mm -hmm. Because when you come in, you take undue career risk and you may be writing yourself a ticket out of the industry, right. but if you can come in with the smoking gun emails and the tra transaction documents that are fraudulent, or you come in with a set of cooked books that the government knows nothing about, well, that's worth paying for because it saves the government tons of money and investigatory resources. They would have never figured it out on their own. And it stops a fraud when it's small before it gets so big that it threatens the entire economy and puts tens of millions of Americans out of work. Right. Something as simple as, as forcing these hedge funds to do their trades through uh, many different uh, financial institutions and have the trade confirmation sent directly to the customers. Would that have helped a great deal that, that you've got a rule that says uh, Madoff has got to do his trades through five different firms, whether it's you know a, a big firm, a small brokerage firm, and then the customers are getting the confirms, maybe they're throwing them away, but at least there's something that if you're not getting anything, uh, you know, it, as you as you know, Madoff had a huge advantage because he cleared his own trades. There was no outside group saying, "Wait a minute, this guy said he's got sixty-five billion dollars, but he doesn't have any money." I don't think customers would know what to do with the trade confirms. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it would place responsibility on the individual investor, mm -hmm. but certainly the the fund of fund should have been getting those trade confirmations. They should have access to a computer system, full transparency to see his trades after they had happened, and you certainly shouldn't allow self custodying self custody was right. a big danger here. Manoff kept score and he kept all the money and so of course he was going to give himself high marks when in fact he was just stealing the money. Right. Uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, the late uh, Thierry uh, Villouge who was in charge of this Access International right next door to us here on Madison Avenue. 
he ran one of these feeder funds, unfortunately, into uh, Madoff on behalf of these European customers. And you, both you and your colleague, I believe, in the book, you describe these conversations where you said to him, Madoff is a fraud. And he said, that cannot be true. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but that cannot be true. And if it is true, I am ruined. And then